Hello everyone, Dr. Siddiqui here. Today we're going to be talking about diabetes. So diabetes is a um, word that is derived from the Greek word that means siphon or pass-through, whereas um, mellitus is a Latin word that means honey or sweet. And this is because uh, in diabetes there's excess sugar that's found in the blood as well as the urine. Now what is um, diabetes? It's a disorder that disrupts the way your body uses sugar. So now there are three different types of um, diabetes. Type 1 um, is when your body does not produce enough insulin which is a hormone that um, allows the sugar to be uh, uptaken by your cells so that can be used as the energy that it is. Now type 2 diabetes in um, the body is producing insulin but it is not able to use it well. So it still uh, ends up in um, buildup of sugar in your blood vessels. And type 3 or gestational diabetes is a um, temporary condition that's seen in pregnant women and this is similar to type 2 diabetes but usually this resolves once uh, the patient delivers the baby. Although these individuals are at an increased risk of type 2 diabetes later on in life or um, having uh, gestational diabetes again in, for the next pregnancy. So let's look at some statistics. There are 425 million adults across the globe that have diabetes and this number is on the rise. Um, it's estimated that in 2040, 1 in 10 adults will have diabetes. And these numbers are scary. I mean, that's, um, that's a large number of people that have this preventable disease. So let's take a look at what happens when you eat this big, fatty, you know, juicy burger um, in a normal individual compared to an individual who has diabetes. So... All the cells in your body need glucose, or uh, which is a form of sugar, to work normally. They use this glucose as a um, as a source of energy or fuel. And uh, when the sugar gets into the cells, this helps, um, and, and it's it gets into the cells with the help of a hormone that's called insulin. Now, if there's not enough insulin, or if the body doesn't respond to insulin, the sugar builds up in the body. So when you ate that big juicy burger, what happens is that food goes into your stomach, and when it's broken down, it's converted to glucose. Um, this glucose is then, um, you know, it enters the bloodstream, and the pancreas is an a, is a organ that is located behind the stomach. This is what produces insulin, which is the hormone that allows that sugar to be uh, uptaken from the bloodstream into the cells so that they can be used for energy. Now, this is where things go wrong in diabetics. So now, like we said, it's a normal individual, the pancreas produces insulin, the insulin acts like a key actually, goes and unlocks the door that allows the glucose to go into the cells. Now in type 1 diabetes, the pancreas fails to produce insulin, so you don't have a key to unlock the door, so if the door is closed, there's no sugar or fuel that's uh, going into the cell, so you're starving those cells from energy. In two, type 2 diabetes, your, the, the pancreas is producing insulin, but the lock has been changed. So the key does not fit the lock anymore, and once again, the door is not open, so the, the, sh the glucose molecules are not able to go into the cells, and so the glucose builds up in the blood vessels. So what are some signs and symptoms of diabetes? The first one, um, you're urinating often. This is called polyuria. Well, poly means a lot. Urea means urine. So you you're have an increased urination. Polydipsia is increased thirst. So you're mo much more thirsty and you know, you're drinking a lot more of fluids. Um, polyphagia is you know, increased hunger and you're eating more. Um, you're going to be fatigued and irritable and um, you can also have blurry vision. 
um, the elevated sugar levels um, actually what it does is damages the blood vessels and so blood can't flow as well as uh, it should to heal infection so this leads to wounds that won't heal and nerve damage can occur because of this increased uh, sugar levels um, and this leads to numbness and tingling of the hands and feet and um, this can uh, this nerve damage basically uh, is what can lead to a lot of complications that we'll see in the next couple of slides. So certain people are more at risk for type 2 diabetes compared to others. So let's take a look at uh, the risk factors. Now there are two types of risk factors. Non-modifiable risk factors are, fa are things that you cannot change that you have no control over, whereas modifiable risk factors are things that you can change. Taking a look at the left-hand side, um, having a family history or just the genetics or the genetic predisposition, um, there are certain people that, you know, you have your, your mother, your father, your grandparents, uncle, aunt, whoever, that may have diabetes, that puts you in an increased risk, almost a two to five-fold increased risk of having diabetes if you have a family member with diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Age is also another risk factor, so age over 45 uh, puts you in an increased risk, and you can't change your age, you can't, you know, age backwards. So, um, and additionally, certain races and ethnicities are an increased risk, um, including Hispanics, Africans, and Asians, um, as well as um, women who have a history of gestational diabetes tend to have an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on in their life. Now let's look at um, risk factors that are modifiable or that you can change. Um, this includes physical inactivity, so um, being, leading a sedentary lifestyle or just you know, um, not exercising enough, this can lead to weight gain, which is the next point, um, being overweight or obese. Now, this is a, a very um, important risk factor that can lead to type 2 diabetes. So, um, uh, that, and then additionally, uh, having high blood pressure and high cholesterol also increases your risk of type 2 diabetes. So, let's look at what diabetes does to your body. It can affect your body from head to toe. So when looking at um, the brain, this can lead to stroke. Um, the teeth can be affected by diabetes, leading to gum disease and um, tooth decay and cavities. Nerve damage, like we mentioned previously, can happen uh, because of diabetes. Diabetes can affect your eyes and lead to cataracts and glaucoma and eventually blindness, um, as well as your heart can be affected. The blood vessels supplying the heart can be affected, leading to heart disease and you know, uh, heart attacks, as well as your kidneys. Your kidneys can be affected very adversely, um, and this is called diabetic nephropathy and can lead to um, chronic kidney uh, end-stage renal disease, which basically um, these individuals will end up on either dialysis or have, need to have a kidney transplant. So... There are two types of uh, damage that can happen. Microvascular refers to small vessels. Micro means small, vascular, obviously vessel. So small muscle, uh, small vessel damage. This is uh, seen as diabet diabetic retinopathy affecting the eyes that can lead to eventually blindness. Diabetic nephropathy kidney damage. And um, lastly, of the microvascular complications is diabetic neuropathy, which we said was the nerve damage that can eventually lead these individuals to having, you know, extremity amputations and losing their limbs. Um, like previously mentioned, the macrovascular large vessel complications are strokes, heart attacks, and um, peripheral vascular disease. Now, these are some really cool images that show uh, the back of the eye. So this cannot be seen with the naked eye. But what you're seeing here is the, the retina, and you're seeing uh, microaneurysms and um, all the damage that is occurring because of high blood pressure and high sh uh, sugar levels, blood sugar levels that's damaging the back of your eye that can lead to glaucoma and cataracts and blindness. And so this is why it's very important 
important for diabetics to have yearly eye exams to make sure that you know the sugars are controlled and that uh, these complications are prevented. This is a um, chest x-ray of a diabetic and this shows a, um, a, a left lower lobe lung infection or a pneumonia and um, a lot of diabetics or diabetics in general are at an increased risk of infection because um, when you have blood vessel damage, well, what happens is the blood can't flow as well as it should, so your body's not able to heal as well. And just the presence of high sugar levels can actually blunt the effect of your immune system, so your, your body's ability to fight infections is actually decreased as well. This is a, quite a gruesome picture of a diabetic with a fungal infection called mucormycosis. So it's scary to see what diabetes can do when it's not controlled. And this uh, is an uh, image of a diabetic foot ulcer, and this is a full thickness um, ulcer that involves the, the skin. This is a full thickness ulcer that you know we see quite often with diabetics uh, with uncontrolled uh, blood sugar levels and uh, diabetes un out of control and who are not you know compliant and not taking their medications the way they should or who are obese. And the reason these uh, you know diabetics are at an increased risk of getting um, ulcers and infections in their feet is because we said that nerve damage um, leads to problems. These individuals are unable to feel pain in their feet um, so if they get a cut on their foot or if they step on a nail they don't realize it and if it's not treated right away this becomes an open uh, sore and if this open sore you know continues to enlarge it can get infected and when it does get infected it can become quite bad um, on uh, the left side, you see a um, infection that you know you can see the tendons. Um, on the right side, you see the uh, the ulcer that is the with the inf surrounding infection that is uh, involves the skin, the muscle, and deep down to the bone. And when you have an infection to the bone, that's scary. So a lot of times, these complications are and these are things that you know you you. you know, if they are not managed, that limb has to be cut off or amputated, and you'll see this often with diabetics. They'll have either both limbs, and even sometimes uh, their hands and feet all you know amputated because of this uncontrolled sugar levels and all these complications of infections. And in order to um, uh, in order to prevent the infection from spreading further, that limb may need to be amputated. So now. Can you prevent diabetes and how do you prevent diabetes? One of the main risk factors that leads to diabetes is obesity or being overweight. So what you can do is lose weight and increase your physical activity. So stop being, leading a sedentary lifestyle. Uh, start becoming active. If you exercise at least 30 minutes a, uh, daily, um, and to the point where you increase your heart rate and you're sweating for those 30 minutes, you can lose up to 8 pounds over 3 months, and this is sustainable. So uh, by increasing your physical activity uh, every day, you, what you can do is you lose weight and you keep that weight off. Also eating a more balanced diet and eating smaller uh, portions and fewer meals, uh, smaller meals throughout the day instead of a big large meal, you know, once or twice a day and incorporating more whole grains and increasing your fiber are ways to uh, prevent diabetes and um, if you already do have diabetes is a great way to um, control your diabetes from getting uh, worse to the point where you uh, see all those complications that we saw in those previous slides which can be quite scary. So I really like this image of a plate. Um, so if you look at your fist, that is a serving size. So your plate should be four serving sizes. Now half of your plate or two serving sizes should be greens and vegetables. Um, notice that I don't say fruits. Well, there are, all, there are a lot of fruits that can increase your sugar levels. So I would say focus more on vegetables because they don't increase your sugar levels. So you can eat, you know, a good portion of vegetables. Um, 
So make sure that half of your plate should be vegetables and you know you can incorporate some fruits. Um, the other half you can be uh, your protein and your starch and um, for starch make sure that you know you stay away from white rice and and potatoes and certain things that have high glycemic index meaning that they can um, increase your sugar levels. Um, so you want to stay away from those. And then one other thing that I wanted to mention is drinking water and I um, emphasize this a lot because I see you know my own co-workers I see um, a lot of people who don't first of all don't drink enough water including myself but also um, drinking other things such as diet sodas which dehydrate you and coffee and so what you can do is substitute water and um, one thing you could do is change um, one thing at a day uh, would be to incorporate a glass of water um, in the morning. What it does is it can suppress your appetite and uh, basically um, it decreases your satiety or the need to eat a lot. So you end up eating a little bit uh, less. Um, and also, I mean, you're made up of 60% water. So the best thing you can drink is water. So to kind of recap what we talked about in this video was um, basically diabetes, which is a um, it's a, it's an epidemic. I mean, there's a, so many people that are uh, developing diabetes, and the age continues uh, type two diabetes, and the age continues to decrease. And you're seeing it more and more in younger adults as well. So um, the key things that you see in diabetics is the um, frequent urination or urinating a lot, in, uh, being thirsty a lot, eating a lot, um, you know, being extreme fatigue and being tired, the numbness and tingling in the hands and feet. Um, uh, and then the complications that we saw were quite scary, and these include infections, including fungal infections and wounds that don't heal well, and uh, nerve damage, as well as um, uh, strokes, heart attacks, damage to your kidneys, leading to um, the end-stage renal disease and, you know, having to depend on dialysis and um, eventually, you know, kidney transplant because it doesn't, you know, stops functioning, um, as well as damage to your eyes and leading to eventually blindness. So what can you do to prevent this uh, scary disease? Um, exercise at least 30 minutes a day, um, get your heart rate going, um, and uh, eating more healthy foods, a balanced diet, avoiding alcohol and tobacco and unhealthy processed fast foods. Additionally, it's important to um, see your doctor uh, regularly um, to make sure um, that your sugars are under control to see if you need medications to control your sugars better, as well as to go do your yearly eye and foot exams if you're a diabetic. Thank you for tuning into this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if there are some suggestions you would like to make, please make sure to comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you.